Hey, all aspirants and developers and everybody out there. Good evening and welcome to another session of Tech Tablet with me, Varun Rao. And in today's session, let us look at another series of SAP UI 5 Fury question and answers. Now, this is the part 4, guys. The rest of the part 3 questions, you can now find them on the website that we have that is techtabletfordevelopers.com. You would be able to find all these question answers uh, in the blog. And this is a very new blog that's come up off late. And we are now also on Instagram with the name Tech Tablet Official and also on Facebook. So if you want any more in depth of these questions, would love it if you could use them. So the aim of today's session would be to look at some frequently asked questions on SAP UI 5 Fury, obviously technical in nature. And we would also be looking at some general business expectations from a UI5 developer and also how do we answer them in an interview. Now talking of general business expectations from a UI5 consultant, things have been changing over the past two years, over the past six months. Things have been changing every now and then. It would be shocking to know that SAP UI5 Fury has, you know, come up with the screens for Tesla and they are powered and you know featured by SAP. Now, if this is the rate of growth, then I'm sure you all understand what is the scope of UI5 Fury. And keeping that in mind, let us begin with the set of questions that I have for you. So the first one is what is a launchpad designer tool and why do we need it? So we can use a launchpad designer tool basically for configuring and creating groups and you know catalogs which can be accessed from the launchpad. Now, what is a launchpad? It's basically a single entry point to all the applications. Here you can search all the recently launched applications via the search capability of your launchpad and the tiles which are available on the FLPD, that is the Fury Launchpad homepage, are also configured using the designer tool. The second one is what are the different O data services that are required for SAP Fury Launchpad? Now, FLPD requires some mandatory O data services. Now they are uh, UI2 page builder CO NF conf. You have UI2 page builder personalization and you have UI2 page builder customization. Apart from these three, you have UI2 inter op and you have UI2 transport. Now these are the five specific O data services which are required for you to set up your Fury Launchpad and also your Launchpad designer. All right. And how do you do that? Your raw data services basically have to be enabled in your gateway and they have to be mapped with the corresponding backend services. And then you would be able to, you know, configure the required application on your launch pad. The third one is how do you get to know, you know, what are the different web browsers options that you have for your SCP Fiori application? Now, in order to do that, you would be having a specific API. Now, this API is sap.ui.device. Now, this can be used for a whole range of devices and also its detection. And you have another API which provides for flags, like it could be a Chrome or a Firefox or a Mozilla or an IE Edge, etc. Now, this is done in sap.ui.device.browser API. And this is a Boolean value, which means it can only be set to a true or a false. All right. The third one is done. The fourth one we have is what is the use of component.js file in the extensibility? All right. Now in UI extensibility, that is user interface extensibility. So the configuration is stored in component.js file, the technical configuration of any application. All right. And the component of the custom application it needs to be inherited from the main component of an original application so to make the location of the original application or the component.js known to sap ui5 it may be necessary to register your module path all right now the configuration in the customizing section it contains a, an extension metadata and it describes basically that the objects can be replaced or that they can be extended. Now that is the functionality of component.js when we refer to UI extensibility. The fifth one is what is the use of SAP Web Dispatcher in the Fiori architecture? 
you can just pause this for a second think over it and then try answering this now this is a very healthy approach of you know going to an interview just hear the question out pause it try, try giving an answer out loud which is of your variant and then probably you can compare and see how closely you are to the correct answer now that can do great help to you guys trust me that's what i do whenever i go to an interview i just read out 30 to 40 questions and i try answering them by myself it's not to check if i'm technically okay with them or not but it is to ensure that my answer is going in a single flow there is no breakage of answer there is no you know blurriness when i answer so all these can be avoided only with practice right so we were talking of the function of a web dispatcher in fiori architecture so basically web dispatcher which is a reverse proxy is an entry point for the any HTTP or HTTPS request that you make in your Fiori architecture. So it basically accepts or rejects connections as per the request. How can you download a newly created theme that is published? So you can, you have this transaction that is UI5 theme underscore tool, which is to download all the newly created themes. And here you will also find CSS in one of those folders. You can also transport the themes from one system to another. It could be from test to production system. And this can be done using the tool for customer themes maintenance. Then you have to start the tool using the same T code that is UI theme underscore tool. You got to navigate to the theme that you want to transport and you have to select it. I mean, select it as in select the required theme and transport it. So that is how you can download the new theme and use it now what is launchpad designer tool and why do we need it now we can use sap fury launchpad designer for configuring and creating groups and catalogs uh, which can be accessed from the flpd that is fury launchpad now this is a single entry point for all applications here we can search all the recently launched apps via search capability of the launchpad Tiles, which are also available on Fury Launchpad, homepage, all can be configured using this specific Launchpad Designer tool. All right, so now that is why we require a Launchpad Designer tool. So, in order to enable communication between your non-SAP, sorry, the between your uh, backend that is, you know, ABAP and your backend server that is, okay, now you have two backend servers, right? So in order to, the basic question is, how would you enable communication between your backend? All right. Now here there is this trusted RFC, which is available. Now this trusted RFC, which is provided for us, it, you know, provides your, it ensures that there is connection established from your backend business suite to all the applications. Now your backend business suite, which is present generally in ABAP server, you know, it, it, it basically subsumes all the modules like ERP, CRM, SRM, SCM and all these. And Fiori is available. Now, when I say Fiori, Fiori or UI5 applications are available in ABAP front-end server in the Fiori launchpad. Now, this is something that you have to understand. The next question is, state the various choices in launchpad design of SAP UI5 Fiori. So, here you have two options. And... The first is configuration layer. The second is customization layer. So let us talk about the configuration layer first. It basically includes the entire content. Now, when I say entire content, I actually mean the whole content as delivered to the client, including the translation. But then at the same point, when you talk of a customization layer, here clients adopt content for entire users in the entity. It is possible to utilize cust layer for testing and also other factors and the content is movable via personalizing requests by clients so after personalization the content is decoupled from the config layer that is the initial layer, layer that we were talking about and here there is no automatic synchronization once the changes have been taken place now this is the thing which you have to remember in customization layer so these are the two choices that we have to you know design your launchpad for any sap ui fury then the last one that we have for you is explain the working of SAP Fiori or you know SAP FLPD. So 
when you launch the Fiori Launchpad, it begins with Fiori Launchpad.html. Now it's because it is only an HTML document according to the browser, which is which is you know loaded, and you know it is making the SAP UI5 or you know it's approaching only towards the SAP UI5 root application. Now, if you are a customer who is using this launch page, a more holistic user experience is provided by you know allowing navigations, transitions, and transactions as well. Now, the key benefits of using Fiori Launchpad are you would be able to define application usage for certain roles or persona. Now, persona specific usage of an application can be described. You have one single home page for all your applications. You can take care of your personalization. They are auto responsive. You have an SSO that is a single sign on. Theme design can be handled or accessed. Search facilities provided. You can bookmark the required pages. You can also navigate transitions and handle transactions. Now, when all these can be done, I think it would call that an entire application. So these are some benefits of using a Fiori Launchpad. So that's all that we have for you in this session. I hope you have enjoyed. Do stay subscribed for another series of UI5 Fiori questions to come up with. And in the meanwhile, you can follow us on the website that is www.techtabletfordevelopers.com. Follow us on Instagram that is techtabletofficial. And you can also check us out on Facebook. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you have a great day out there. Thank you.